Welcome to this week's edition of Mountain Outhouse News. I'm your host, Jam Jam. This is the craziest to happen in running this week. This week's stories include Zach Bitter shocks Joe Rogan, Americans win at UTMF, and ultra runner Oz Perlman lands his very own show on NBC and has nothing to do with running. Zach Bitter, the most recent addition to the 2018 Western States 100 entrance list, thanks to title sponsor Ultra, went on the Joe Rogan podcast this past week, mainly discussing his low carb diet used to his advantage in ultra running. Zach blew Rogan's mind at one point in the show when it was revealed Zach ran an 11 hour, 41 minute, 100 miler. You ran a hundred miles in 11 hours? Yeah, that was that was on a tr that was one on the track in, in the I don't give a <laughs> if it was on the moon. That's crazy. You ran 11 hours, you ran a hundred miles. Yeah, so I think the thing that- How long does it take to drive a hundred miles? <laughs> I figured that fact alone was one of the main reasons Zach got on the show, but Rogan seemed totally caught off guard and totally freaked out. In clean sport news this week, it was announced there will be drug testing for the first time ever at the Mount Washington road race. The 7.6 mile ascent up to the top of Mount Washington is now 58 years old and a huge part of America's competitive mountain running scene. The top men's and women's winners will be tested for performance enhancing drugs, along with several other randomly selected participants in an effort to keep the sport clean. All testing standards will follow those prescribed by WADA. Which brings us to our next question. Will Western States 100 follow up with last year's drug testing protocol and again test top competitors at the 2018 race? They have a drug testing policy in place on their website, but we haven't seen a formal announcement relating to this year's upcoming event. Here's a dumb idea. Hold a 0.5K race. That's exactly what a race in Bourne, Texas will be doing. They even have a pre-race beer, halfway through the race donut slash coffee slash smoke break area, and finish with another beer and finisher medal. Well, actually, this is starting to sound kind of awesome. Well, if it sounds good to you, unfortunately, it's already sold out. Kudos to them and congrats for raising money for your charity, blessings in a backpack. We have to give a much deserved shout out to one of our local mountain trail runners here in Phoenix, Arizona, who is also a Phoenix Parks Ranger. David Metzler was honored by the Phoenix Fire Department with the 2017 Outstanding Achievement for his work with rescues on Camelback Mountain. Congrats and thank you, David. More super duper grandmasters track records in the news. I don't know if this is just a recent phenomenon or is just getting more press these days, but the number of 80, 90, 100 year olds getting after it in the running space is exploding. This time, Mike Fremont at age 96 jumped into his first ever track race, an 800 meter at the Drake Relays. He also set the road one mile record in his age group earlier in the week at 13 minutes, 55 seconds. Can you imagine? More athlete sponsor moves this week with Dave Mackey jumping on over to Ultra. Dave, of course, is training for and racing the lead man this summer. Stay tuned for updates as he attempts that feat. Speaking of Mackey, his Zangray 50 course record time of seven hours, 51 minutes has withstood the test of time. Until the weekend? Pima Pirate Charlie Ware busted out a seven hour, 30 minute win on the storied course, taking down, wait, what? Oh, that was on a special fire altered course, meaning the out and back route this year could serve as an overall event record, but was not run along the same point to point traverse of the Highline Trail that Mackey ran back in 2004. James Benet followed up in second place in 8.20 and Sylvain Camus was third in 8.34. For the ladies, it was an Aravipa team sweep with Lauren Curry on top with a nine hour, 32 minute win time. Susan Kramer in second in 10.05 and Nadine Haluszczyk in third in 10.25. Shout out to the winners of this year's Canyons 100K, which is well known for copycatting the middle section of the Western States 100 course. Just playing guys. Corrine Malcolm, who was just admitted into the Western States 100 this past week off the wait list, took first in 11.44, and Lon Freeman finally took the win after his fourth straight finish of the race in 10.08. Many eyes over the weekend were on the Ultra Trail to Mount Fuji race in Japan, which was back again this year after a short hiatus. The event, which is part of the Ultra Trail World Tour, featured a lot of top athletes, but it was ultimately Americans Courtney DeWalter and Debo, AKA Dylan Bowman, who prevailed. 
Courtney actually led all race, but Debo was behind Pau Capel of Spain most of the event by a significant margin. Debo had a late surge and passed Capel with just five kilometers to go and held him off for a three minute win in 1924. American Seth Swanson, always seemingly under the radar, placed third in 2044. Courtney's time of 2357 put her two hours ahead of the next finisher, who was Kaori Niwa in 26 hours. This is likely the final year for the Lost Boys 50 mile, which announced the news ahead of this year's race, citing increased fees and low attendance. Regardless, Joel Meredith won in eight hours, 31 minutes, with Gemma Bachman finishing first for the ladies in 11.34. Bummer it will be gone, and I gotta say, I'm sorry to the race organizers for never running this one, as it looks pretty amazing. With a desert start and finish up at Lake Cuyamaca, where the San Diego 100 plays host, it looks incredible. Rats. Let's see if we can get the Outhouse Nation to attend and force a revival. Got to show some love to the mighty Midwest, and this week I do so by featuring the Flat Rock 101K. Now that's a unique distance. It was David Box winning in 11.02, setting a new course record on the Kansas, I'm assuming flat course. For the ladies, it was Mindy Kuhlman winning in 13.31. The final results are in for the six and 10 day Shri Chinmoy races in New York. John Geisler took the six day win with 403 miles, and it was Petra Kasparova for the ladies with 370. In the 10 day, Ashprahanal Alto won the eight with 826 miles, and Ivanka Nemkova was first with 621. The Badwater Salton Sea event is a unique one in the sport that features an 81 mile run from Salton City at 234 feet below sea level to the finish at Palomar Mountain at 5,500 feet elevation. You can't run this one solo, but must instead register with a team of two or three, and you have to stick together the whole race. Interesting dynamics. I see what you did there. It appears the quickest team was by a two-man comprised of Walker Higgins and Dan McHugh in 15 hours, 36 minutes. Kind of sad, but there are mostly all men and mixed teams with just two all-women's teams out there. The top was Patsy Ramirez Arroyo and Susie Swinehart, but it appears Patsy was a drop a mile 64. Not sure how, but Susie continued on to finish in 1827. The final story this week is a huge congratulations to ultra runner Oz Perlman for landing his very own show on NBC that premieres next week. Oz not only is a finisher of Western States, Leadville, Badwater, and the Spartathlon, but he boasts a 50 mile personal best of five hours, 25 minutes. Oz is a mentalist by profession. To find out what exactly that is, you'll have to tune in to his show. Stoked. And with that, Thanks for tuning in to episode 91 of Outhouse News, and we'll see you next time. If you have crazy stories to share or a question or feedback for the show, please leave a comment below. Gotta remember to read those comments. If you'd like to directly support the show financially, consider becoming a Patreon supporter of this channel, or check out the link below to own this one-of-a-kind pair of Jam Jam sunglasses, which comes with its own certificate of authenticity and a Mountain Outpost sticker pack. Link below. We've still got a few pairs left that got lost in the shuffle. Links also below. Have a shitty week.